So we've talked about the differences in muscle fiber types. So let's talk about a couple of neural factors that help determine force production. Okay. Mm -hmm. As we dis discussed in the last one in, in a couple of previous lectures, type one produce lowest amount of force, but they're fatigue resistant. Whereas type two X produce a lot of, a lot of force, but they fatigue very quickly. Okay. But the nervous system is really important when it comes to exercise force production and that sort of thing. And so here it says fiber types, really this is nervous system differences here. So when it comes to the nervous system, <clears throat> in order for a muscle to do anything, we actually have to send a signal via the nervous system to cause those muscles to contract. And in order to do this and to maximize our, uh, the amount of force we produce, we have to have coordination of these muscles. And this occurs via recruitment and rate coding. Remember a motor unit is one motor neuron, alpha motor neuron, and every fiber that it innervates. And they range in size from 20 muscle fibers to even 2,000 muscle fibers. And as we discussed in our last one, they have differences in the contractile properties, right? So slow, contract slowly, but don't fatigue, whereas fast, contract quickly, produce loss of force, but fatigue very, very quickly. So... <clears throat> Just kind of a summary from last time, um, these top three bullet points. So I'm not going to go over that, but you've got this all or none law. Okay. And we've talked about this as several times, basically saying that if um, a motor unit fires, it fires maximally. There's not 50% firing. It's not 20% firing. It's a hundred percent. But since the muscle is made up of many motor units, not all, not the entire muscle is not contracting at the same time. Very rarely, if ever, does that actually happen. Now, the, de the percentage of muscle fiber type depends on the individual, right? So, um, for example, take me. Uh, I'm uh, a runner, uh, endurance runner. I'm not, uh, not a sprinter or anything like that. So I would tend to have a high percentage of type 1 muscle fibers, whereas, you know, somebody that's on, you know, a sprinter on the track team or someone that plays football, they're likely to have a high percentage of type 2 fibers, and so that determines, helps determine what we'll be better at. And so, like we said last time, whoops, sorry, there are many different muscle fiber types. So this just gives you an example here. Um, like it says here at the bottom of this caption, we've got type 1, type 1C, 2C, 2AC, 2A, 2AX, and 2X. So I just bring this up not to confuse you or anything like that. But as you go forward and are in other classes and are doing reading, um, it's possible you'll come across these. But again, but again, for this class, we're just going to focus on one, two, a and two X. So when it comes to recruitment, we have the size principle, right? So we recruit from smallest to largest. And the way this happens is small mo uh, motor units have a lower threshold. Okay. So it's easier to reach that threshold. So they're activated first, whereas fast motor units they have a much higher or less negative, however you want to look at it, threshold. So it takes a bigger stimulus to activate those. Um, so also remember, like I said a couple minutes ago, we recruit from slow or small to large, which means we get those small or those slow twitch fibers first and those fast twitch fibers later. And even when fast twitch fibers are firing, our slow twitch fibers are also firing at the same time. They just constantly go right they they don't they have lots of endurance they don't get tired now really to recruit 100 percent of your muscle fibers in a muscle is nearly impossible um, this really can only happen if you have like outside stimulation so like electrical stimulation so at most we're only ever recruiting 95 to 99 percent um, it's not completely understood why this is the case, but it's thought to be a protective mechanism that if we're ever using all of our motor units, muscle fibers, that it's just, the, we increase the likelihood of muscle damage. Okay. And so again, here's just a picture showing or a figure just showing how we recruit motor units. So from small to large. And so at this point, um, based on what we're doing, we've only recruited these first three motor units and the remaining five aren't recruited. So that will limit the amount of force that we can produce. The other thing that we have to think about is rate coding and what rate coding is, is just the firing rate that the neuron sends signals to the muscle. So if we, as we train, and we'll talk about this more in a couple weeks, as we train, we actually increase this rate coding. So we're able to send signals at a faster rate. 
Um, and this is really beneficial once we get above like 50% max. Along those lines, this will cause motor units to synchronize and fire at the same time. Okay, so just for a, for a moment, imagine that you're on a tug of war team and there's 10 of you. Well, what's going to happen to force production if five of you pull at once, like during the first second and then the, during the second second, the other five pull? Okay, as opposed to all 10 of you pulling at the same time. In essence, that's what we're trying to do by synchronizing, is that if we have all of our motor units fire or more of our motor units fire at the same time, we'll produce um, a, a large amount of force. And so these, psych, these neural factors, these psychological factors play a huge role in helping us <clears throat> um, generate force. Okay, and so we can see this here where we've got a single action potential. We produce um, our twitch or our force, which is right here. So the black line is force. So a single action potential. Okay, we have a little bit of force. But as we have repeated action potentials and they're closer and closer together, we are able to generate a lot more force. Remember, <clears throat> when a muscle contracts, there is a period of relaxation, but that takes time. And so if we stimulate the muscle before it's completely contracted, we're going to be able to generate a little bit more force and then a little bit more force and a little bit. So we get this stepwise increase. So right here, well, it kind of crossed everything out, but notice that the force production is going up. And if we stimulate often enough and at high enough intensity, we'll experience tetanus, which is this sustained muscle contraction, um, maximal muscle contraction. <clears throat> now, the last thing that I want to talk about is, can we actually change our fiber types? The answer is maybe, but if so, it's not a whole lot. Um, we can change it. There's some evidence to suggest we can go from type 2X to type 2A, um, but this requires a lar large amount of endurance. This should say training, not changing, but endurance training. Um, but it doesn't seem to go the other way. So if we do a lot of resistance training, it doesn't seem to change our type one into type two A or even two X. Okay. So if you could kind of look at this and we're going to talk about this on the next video that you can become an endurance athlete, but it's going to be hard if you're not um, like a strength, a, a anaerobic, a power, however you want to term it, um, that it's going to be difficult to be good at that <clears throat> thanks to your genetics.